everyone and welcome to the third video for week three about online learning in the corporate sector and it, the course is AEDT 2160 learning online learning theories and models. Two questions to ponder going into this um, little clip. What are the areas of corporate online learning that you're familiar with? What areas do you feel need more investigation? And how does corporate online learning contribute to what's considered to be effective adult education? So just jumping in to some rationale for online learning and corporate training. Um, and the first point is really critical. It comes up in the government clip as well that the global recession has had a marked impact on how training is funded, developed, and delivered. Uh, many businesses get into corporate training because they want to achieve a positive return on investment. They may need to meet some regulated industry requirements for timely, consistent, and accurate training. So they're looking for some kind of standardization. They have a diverse workforce that needs training that addresses multiple learning styles and types. Um, so something that can be in the, the K-12 environment, it would be called personalized instruction. Um, they need to be able to attract and retain employees. And being able to offer training and support their employees is one way to do that. They need a continual reinforcement of job-related skills. So if you think of, for example, in the mining industry, this is really, really a very useful way to continually reinforce when folks are on site for one or two months at a time and then off site for one or two months before they go back in. They can have um, sort of a shot in the arm of online training. And meet the needs of a new generation of employees who are tech savvy, they value collaboration, and they're used to informal learning. And of course, for money. So some of these numbers here, reduced training budgets 11% reduction in 2009, reduced staff for training almost up to 8% in some cases in 2009, um, and now we're in 2012. So it hasn't bounced back yet. So we're looking at a centralized shared service model for training and online learning can definitely fit that bill. So looking at some of the market overview. Um, in 2009, self-paced e-learning. So you can work your way through it. It's not facilitated. Uh, very dissimilar to K-12 in some ways. $27.1 billion. And it's projected to grow to almost $50 billion by 2014, which is not that far away. The U.S. market is expected to reach almost $24 billion by 2015. So it's really a significant increase um, in e-learning or online learning in these markets. Corporate buyers are still the top buyers in North America, but the academic buyer, both K-12 and post-secondary, will surpass that in the next five years. That's the prediction. And certainly we saw that when you look at the numbers it, with online learning in K-12 and higher ed, you could certainly understand why. There's also a boom in global demand for courses offered by for-profit international education providers. So these are people that are providing, you're buying a course, um, and there is an increased boom in that. People want that instantly. If they need the knowledge and they need the accreditation, they're looking for where can they get it quickly. Some of the trends. Uh, lots of resistance to the packaged, prepackaged online learning. Countries, regions, people, corporations, they want content that's local, they want it specific, they want it unique. And of course, if you're a large scale provider of online learning, you just can't scale it down. So what that means is there's an opportunity for smaller players to come into the market of online learning and customize and offer some unique solutions. Even during the recession, some significant revenues have been able to be created by for-profit virtual education suppliers. So they're piggybacking on the fact that travel budgets are cut, um, that people are having to do more with less, and they've been able to create all the way through post-secondary and vocational significant revenues in this time. Many of them have done this by taking their current system, so legacy system, uh, and repackaging it with new social networking tools. So for example, uh, there may have been a leadership uh, program that they offered online that was self-paced, asynchronous, no instructor involvement, 
and they've barely taken that content and repackaged it with an online community and some sort of uh, secure Facebook type of approach to learning and basically recast something that they already had in their hip pocket. The other interesting trend is that right now there's no market leader um, or not a real monolithic market. It's very fragmented. So there are literally thousands of suppliers competing in niche product areas. And so for the underserved buyer, it's significant revenue potential for suppliers to cater to these underserved buyers and be able to really compete in that niche area. Finding the niche area is the hard part. Just a few more trends here that um, emerge globally. Language learning, it's in demand across all segments. And the most significant inhibitor of sales for these people that are taking their legacy systems and recasting them are that there's new software and new products that allows people to create and capture content on the fly and deliver it very easily. So even some of the ones that are mentioned in the government video like Articulate, uh, even YouTube for example, very quickly people can do much more in-house than they were able to in the past. So that's a, a bit of a competitor piece here. Self-paced e-learning that targets content creation, certification, licensure, this is where there's a trend in growth. That's why you see a lot of growth in the academy, so academic online learning, as well as in healthcare, uh, where you're getting that licensure requirement. I've put a link in here to a Content Futures clip. Uh, it's a very interesting video that speaks to the nature of content and where it's going and how does that impact where we might be going with online learning. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. So who is leading the way in this space? Not surprisingly, healthcare. Closely followed, so this is an example of a, a personalized learning environment that was created for a healthcare group across Western Canada. Telecommunications, TELUS, for example, is doing some major work within their training and development around online learning in its various forms, both formal, informal, and social. Government, of course, and then we get into some post-secondary and some small business. Individuals are also jumping on the bandwagon and part of that, individual corporations, so we're talking 50 employees and under, um, or even a handful of employees, because you can create so much more by yourself, there's a, a prolific amount of content out there that's being created online. Of course the challenge is, and definitely from my standpoint, the challenge is is it educationally sound? Does it actually affect learning? Or are we just replicating what we know didn't work the first time e-learning came around, uh, which was page turning online? And so that is one of the biggest challenges to corporate online learning today. I've put another link in here, and it's uh, one that I encourage you to view, but you do not need to do it now. It's about an hour in length. But it's part of a whole series that was done with Don Tapscott uh, through CBC. And this particular piece is on open source knowledge. It's a very interesting clip. Um, it's not one you need to view for this week, even for our discussion. But it's one that you may want to view as you start to get into your problem-based learning and start exploring the resources that are out there. So I'll leave that one with you. The other link I'll leave with you, and this one is fantastic, uh, it's a wiki site done by UBC. It's part of a course actually, and the piece is around corporate e-learning. And so what I've done is put the link up there, because you'll be able to get it in the PDF, as well as the contents in the link. One of the, the biggest values of what this site does is the resources that it provides in the references. I've also pulled those references into this PowerPoint so that if the wiki site ever disappears, we will have a link to some of the references. So some synthesis questions I'd like you to consider now that you've had the very quick overview of uh, the corporate online learning and explored some of the links in, embedded into this PowerPoint. 
What area of research in corporate online learning is needed most from your perspective and why? And then how can you dovetail the qualities of effective adult ed with the characteristics of corporate online learning? And then lastly, how does selling access to content promote lifelong learning or not? Does it change the dynamic of education? And if so, how? And so we'll discuss these questions when we get together in our tutorial this week, and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on them. Thank you. This is the reference pulled from the wiki. So again, these are not articles you need to read at all, but it's more of a capturing them in case they disappear approach. Mm -hmm.